morning, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today is January 2nd, 2024, and me and my good friend Gavin Galka Fishing are out here at a very special lake looking to catch some midwinter fish. Here's a good shot of how big this lake is. Right now, we're under a bridge near the highway and there are just thousands and thousands of bluegill stacked up right here. Okay, just so we're getting this on video, those are all fish right there, if you can see that at all. Look, I could reach in and grab those fish right there. And I just did, no joke. I reached in and I grabbed a bluegill. I dropped him, but point remains that I was literally able to reach in and grab a bluegill. The nice part of the rig we're using today is that it is a pike leader, and so it has a snap swivel on it. And with the snap swivel, that allows me to change out my bait as often as I'd like. So we're not married to this jerk bait right now can very well keep changing it up and trying different combinations of things to see what works. So this thing does dive. Well, obviously it has a bill on it and it's not a floating jerk bait, is it? Oh, it might be a floating jerk bait. That's not good. That's not what I want in the winter time. The good news when pike fishing is that you don't have to take an abundance of casts to find them. They will find you. <laughs> no, it's a gigantic crappie. It's a big crappie. Man, I don't want to be snagging fish all day. Come on now. That's... Oh my goodness. I want a crappie fish now. <laughs> Gavin just snagged an absolutely ginormous, healthy, beautiful crappie. That's what I want to be catching today. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and jig with his rod real quick. But after that, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of suspended jigging. Yeah, that's not going to produce right now. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and take my rod. I'm going to take the stopper out of the float on that so that my bait can sink right to the bottom but my float can act as an indicator. Alright, so now I have slightly dirtier hands but as you can see I went ahead and put tip that jig with a little piece of night crawler. That's just going to help us find the fish. Um, once we can find those fish down there then we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch it up to plastics so that we can have some fun with these fish. So Gavin snagged that crappie out in the middle of the channel. So that's precisely where we're gonna try and go with our bait. Perfect. And so ideally, hopefully, the jig will sink down to the bottom, but the float will stay up top. We'll be able to bounce it and jig it. My float is moving out towards the main lake, which indicates to me that there is some current coming out of this channel here. We already hooked up. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just like that. And I didn't even see the bite or feel it. We're hooked up, Gavin. Oh yeah, see? And the float comes right down to that jig. And just like that, my first fish of the year. Welcome to 2024. That is a black crappie, Pomoxis nigromaculatus. Fish number one on the year. And it couldn't have started off in a better way. See that? little piece of night crawler big black crappie and he is going to return okay 
There you go. Got turned around. He's going to return right back where he belongs. So, as I had hoped, my jig sank down to the bottom, but my float stayed at the top, which was ideal because it allows the bait to get down to the fish where they're holding in deeper, warmer water. But my float stays on, on top, keeping the jig vertically suspended so that it's not just sitting on the bottom doing nothing. It allows me to provide some action to my bait and the float also acts as an indicator to me because I am using heavier line that there is a bite. Now on that one, I didn't actually feel or see a bite. That was just me attempting to jig my bait and realizing that I was having some resistance. So that is a very interesting thing. We'll see if that affects me in the future. But that does make sense. Crappie have a different bite than practically any other fish. When a crappie bites, they essentially suck in the bait rather than going out and grab, like grappling it, grasping it, however you'd want to say it. They just kind of suck in the bait with their big mouths, just like that. One important thing to know as an angler is that just the one. One important thing to know though, if you're ever going to fish for crappie, is that just because they have bigger mouths does not mean that they are more aggressive as fish. Tipped it with a tiny piece of night crawler. Dude. No, did you see that? Look, there's something waking out there near my float. That was wild. Dude, it happened again. Something just tailed on my float. We certainly are, because I just got another bite. Dude, and they're just holding. Woo! I got floats if you want. Big head shake. And they are active. Look at that fight. If you could eat fish out of this river, that would be an eating size fish. Second fish of the day, second black crappie, once again, tipping a night crawler on a float or on a jig below a float with no stopper. There it is. Barely, barely hooked. But these fish are very, very active. That's interesting. So every now and again, I give, whoa, there we go. Yeah, Gavin, get on this. I'll give you my rod if you want to try it. Oh, don't you wake. Don't you surface. Gotta keep them pinned. Is it? Oh yeah, it might be. Yeah. Not even, oh, oh my gosh. Whoa. What? That is a dinner plate, a slab of a crappie. That is our third crappie of the day, easily our biggest, a little jacked up tail there. If you can see, it's kind of bent funny. He's been, uh, bitten that before. I'll stop keeping them out of the water. It is the winter time. Don't want these fish to get too stressed out. But there we go. So uh, I might have been wrong earlier in saying that the float would be a good indicator of a bite because when I am getting bites, the line is just going right through the hole in that float. I got a bite. 
I don't know what this is though. There we go. That's something different. Changing it up today. That is our fourth fish of the day and our second species, a little bluegill. Beautiful fish. All right, got a nice little photo of this guy. Send him right back where he belongs. I think Gavin's hooked up on one of those slabs. Heck yeah. That is awesome. At the other what? The other bridge. Oh, the other bridge. Remember that? Is it I, think, I think that's the one that I'm thinking of that you're talking about. Holy cow. That thing is just shaking its head like crazy. I might have to tighten my drag. Oh, oh, Woo. that's not a crappie. That is our third different species of the day. That's got to be close to a master angler pumpkin seed. Woo. Look at that. That is a mean pumpkin seed right there. Fifth fish of the day, third different species, a beautiful big pumpkin seed. Love to see big fish like that, that is awesome. Quick release, a little confused but there he goes. I got a fish. Except mine. <laughs> That's an awesome double up right there. My sixth fish of the day right there. Chunky, healthy bluegill. That is awesome. Not a huge hit, but definitely a whole lot of fight. Gavin over there showing me up with a giant crappie. Awesome double up out here on January 2nd, dead of the winter time. He goes back and so does our bait. Let's see what we can get out there again. Right? Just another big bluegill. I think that is our seventh fish of the day. Third or fourth bluegill. Well, probably our third. Three bluegill, three crappie, one pumpkin seed. Beautiful, healthy bluegill. We're having a numbers day out here. This is awesome. Another crappie just demolished my float. Keeps happening. Oh, no way. Gavin, you might want to hold on to yours for a second. <laughs> oh, oh, oh hold my on. Gosh. GoPro Are getting that. Me? Oh my Dude, goodness. That's an insane double up right there. That's as good as that gets. That's thumbnail worthy. Hold on. Try and get a good shot of that for the thumbnail. Dude, that's insane. That, that is so worth it. 
our hands are freezing. Oh man, dude. Thank Look at that. Lord. That is just unreal. Beautiful double up, man. Awesome. Absolutely Sweet. awesome. All right, I'll send him back. Oh, hey. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, They'll take their time. Dude, that's insane. Now, if our hands weren't about to fall off, we would definitely have an epic handshake after this. But as it is, our hands are about 30 degrees right now. What are you talking about, dude? Oh, oh, and it's still a crisp dab. Let's go. All right, actually, I think we're gonna take a break there, have a snack, warm up in the car, and then come back out here, try to catch a few more. So, what do you think? yeah, I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm cold. We need to go ahead and regroup and just talk about what's going on. And, man, so. To recap at this point in the video, I think I've caught eight or nine fish, four big slab crappie. I think Gavin will even on the crappie. Maybe you have one more than me. I've got three or four bluegill, I think three, and then one big pumpkin seed. And every fish we've caught today has been healthy. Even though all the fish we're seeing over here are small, all the fish we're catching out there are healthy. Big, healthy fish. So we're gonna go ahead and head back to the car and regroup here. We still have about an hour and a half of sunlight. So we'll take possibly 20 minutes to a half an hour for a break, warm up, eat some food, come back out here, get on that sunset, beautiful crappie bite. And I will see you when we return. I want something that's gonna stay put and then I can violently jerk it. So I don't know if this is gonna be the ticket today. It might honestly be more worth it to hook one of those bluegill real quick and just see what I can do with it.